What is going on, everyone? Shall we, Kevin? Uh, today, I had just a couple of points I want to talk about. Namely, why police are awesome, and I think we should give them a lot more respect for the job that they're doing. So, in recent times, um, past like three years or so, police have been really under uh, public scrutiny. And it drives me up the wall. Some of it is, you know, rightfully so. Some of it is police brutality. But by and large, it seems that most people are crime brutality. And it's simply unfounded. It's just not, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, it bothers me because there are public servants. And they do a very dirty job that no one really wants to do. So there's a thing called the social contract, right? And that's sort of an agreement uh, among society. And it's that we give up the right, like certain rights, like the right to do whatever the hell you want, right? You give that up in exchange for guaranteed security. So naturally, if we're going to give up rights in exchange for security, there's got to be someone that will guarantee us the security. those people are the police, right? So we task them with doing society's dirty work. And, um, they are. Just so happens, though, that, um, that's a dirty job, and there's a lot of fighting involved, because people are stubborn. Who would have thought? But, um, the law enforcement is ugly. And, um, one of the important things that I want to point out that you have to follow the, the lawful orders of police, right? And that, to me, it, look, it, it looks like that no one is taking that seriously, or at least uh, a, percent, a small percentage of people are not taking it seriously. Um, take, for instance, Mike Brown, Ferguson, Missouri. I actually did a research paper on that uh, this last semester because I was very curious. Um, I love controversy. Um... So what had happened was, and the, the gist of it was, uh, there's a bolo issued from the Ferguson Police Department for two black males uh, that gave their description of their height, approximate weight, and uh, their, their clothes they were wearing. They were wanted for uh, an assault on a shopkeeper and uh, that. So, uh... What happened was Officer Darren Wilson was uh, on patrol. He had just left the scene of uh, an infant with breathing issues that he helped restore, helped restore the infant's breathing. And so he cruised down, uh, I think it was Canfield Drive, right, when he noticed the two individuals, Mike Brown and Dorian Johnson, his friend. Um, and uh, he noted that they matched the description of the two men that were on the uh, polo. So he made what's called a, uh, a Terry stop, right? And a Terry stop is from the Supreme Court ruling Terry v. Ohio. And all it says is that given given certain circumstances, the police can stop you and question you and even frisk you uh, for their own safety. So what are the circumstances? Well, you have to have reasonable suspicion. And uh, reasonable suspicion can be achieved through hearsay evidence, and that's stuff like bolos uh, and other reports from other police officers. It's uh, witness from, or information from witnesses, and that sort of stuff. So, the bolo that was issued constitutes hearsay evidence, which fulfills the reasonable suspicion standard for uh, a Terry stop. So, first and foremost, the initial stop between Officer Wilson and uh, Mike Brown was lawful. It was okay for Wilson to stop legal. Um, and then the events that happened after, let's have a look at that. So what happened afterwards was, after he made the stop, uh, Officer Wilson had blocked most of both of the lanes. He parked like sideways on a little two-lane two uh, neighborhood road. And uh, so he went to open his door to step out. And according to the official Department of Justice report, he either 
bounced off of ground or ground, pushed the door shut. And it's at that time then that uh, Mike Brown reached in and started striking Officer Wilson. Um, so Officer Wilson, because he was seated, he was seating inside his patrol car, the SUV. He probably he didn't have any access to uh, the pepper spray or the stun gun or any what they call less lethal alternatives, right? So he couldn't get to stuff that might not kill you. It's more, you know, to detain, to help you initiate an arrest, right? Stuff that hurts but won't kill you. So he couldn't get to that. So the only other option was to get to his, uh, his service pistol. And I believe it's a Glock 45 caliber. And uh, so he draws that, says, you, you know, get back or I'll shoot you some ball on the line. And uh, Brown, according to the report, Brown had uh, challenged him. He said, he's too much of a pussy to shoot me. So uh, Brown, according to the report, Brown reaches over, tries to get control of uh, Officer Wilson's gun. And uh, according to Officer Wilson, he actually got the gun pointed uh, inside his pelvis. And uh, so they tried to do it and swallow the gun. Officer Wilson got gained control of the gun again, squeezed the trigger, but it didn't fire, or it didn't fire rather. Uh, so he kept pulling the trigger. Eventually, one went off and hit the fleshy bit in between uh, the thumb and index finger of uh, Mike Brown. So Brown uh, ran away from the car. Officer Wilson gave chase, and then uh, Mike Brown turned toward Officer Wilson, and Officer Wilson fired the next volley shot that ended up killing him. So, as I'm sure you noticed, there was a hell of a lot of controversy over that. Um, the residents of Ferguson, Missouri, pretty well tore down the whole frame town. Um, massive riots and looting and all sorts of chaos like that. Um, there was cries for justice for Mike Brown and stuff like that, and uh, that's what really kicked the Black Lives Matter movement uh, into the mainstream media. But uh, I had a couple questions, you know. I was I I wanted to find out was it brutality or was it justified. So when I did my report on it, um, I looked at the laws that surrounded police use of force and uh, police detention, right? Because taking taking someone's life is the ultimate seizure, right? So that would apply under the Fourth Amendment, uh, which states that we are to be free from unlawful search and seizure. But uh, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, when police are in fear of their life, they're allowed to use force. Right. So, Officer Wilson had the subjective belief that his his life was in danger because uh, Mike Brown had already tried to gain control of his pistol, had already put it into his pelvis, and tried to shoot him. And he had already assaulted him. He hit him several times in the face which is very dangerous because if you were to lose consciousness, then you have no control, and uh, the perpetrator can then go and get your gun, shoot you, or, you know, go commit other crimes. <clears throat> which is obviously not okay. So, given all that, that's why Officer Wilson used force. That's why Officer Wilson shot Mike Brown. And it sucks. It really sucks. It sucks any time the police have to kill anyone because that's not what they're there for. They're there to serve and protect and help. They, they love all they want to help. And um, regardless of what the media will tell you or what any group will tell you, overwhelmingly, that's what they want to do. I've been on several ride-alongs with the local PDs myself, and then above all, they're all really straight-A guys that want to help their community. But um, to bring it back full circle, the social contract, we charge the police with protecting us, right? Which, as we talked about, is a disgusting, dirty business. Uniforms get dirty, 
you know, you get into fights, you have to hurt people, and you get hurt too. So, I don't see how it would be unreasonable, uh, given those circumstances. I don't see how you could find Officer Wilson at fault. Um, now, there was uh, accusations that the department was disproportionately targeting the black community, and those were true. Uh, shortly, I think it was like a day after the DOJ released the Darren Wilson report, uh, they released another report on an investigation they did on the department as a whole. And uh, it revealed that, yes, Ferguson Police Department as a whole did target the black community uh, disproportionately. I think, I think it was like something like 68% of Ferguson is black, the community. But uh, black Americans constituted almost 97% of those cited, 92% of those arrested. And so that obviously is uh, quite the uh, difference. That's disproportionate. Um, but, uh, it's important to know, though, that they're charged with protecting us, and for that simple reason, we need to follow their orders, right? If the way that, the way that our justice system is set up is that you argue in court, so if you feel that your arrest is unlawful, or... Anyway, if you feel that your arrest is unlawful, right, or unconstitutional, something, something or the other, it's not the right. To, you're not in the position to fight it on the street. You need to, unfortunately, let it happen, and then fight it in court. Be respectful. Be polite. You know, act like your mama raised you right. But when it comes down to it go to court, because that is where, that's where it was supposed to, that's where you're supposed to fight the law, is in court. You have the adversarial judicial system, where you stand before your accuser, you argue your point, and then you get, you get adjudicated guilty or innocent before a panel of your peers, the jury, right? And that's the thing. You know, I, I don't have perfect faith in the judicial system. Sometimes it doesn't work. But by and large, it works. If you look at the success rate of fighting in court versus the success rate of fighting a cop on the street, you're going to get your ass whipped on the street by a cop if you try to fight him. So, but no one's going to kick your ass if you fight it in court. If you try to fight a charge in court, if you can't afford a lawyer, they provide one. And, um... That helps you build a battle plan for your defense. And if you have an incompetent lawyer, that's guaranteed under the, I believe it's the Sixth Amendment, right to due process. You can actually, if you're convicted, you can do a um, collateral attack on your conviction, I think it's called, and um, argue that you had incompetent defense to get a retrial. that to say, thank you for bearing with me through that, but all of that to say, have more faith in the cops, treat them with respect, if you feel you're being discriminated against, work through it, finish your encounter with the law, whether it's an arrest, a ticket, or a warning, whatever, if you feel you're being discriminated against, based on race, religion, creed, whatever, any of those protected statuses by the court, um, report it. They take that stuff very seriously. What a...
Hey, I want to talk to you. Why did you do that? Wait, no, 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 I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. You almost ran me over. I didn't cut that bit out. Kind of scared the hell out of me. I had to like stop for a minute. Holy shit. Ah, I was trying to turn. And I about, I almost started my turn. And the lady drove right beside me. I'm so freaking glad I didn't actually start turning because she would have plowed me right over. Holy cow, dude. So Cali Kevin, we're talking about the law and we're talking about safe driving. <laughs> oh, damn, dude, I got the shakes now. Ah. Yeah, what were we talking about? The law, legal stuff, U.S. Constitution. Yeah, where the hell was I? <laughs> um, yeah. Fight, it, fight cops in court, not on the street. You'll lose every time if you try to fight them on the street. Besides, they do you a service. Um, to the folks that hate cops, why? You know, is it because you had an isolated incident? Or maybe you were unfortunate enough to have a series of unfortunate incidents, you know, unfortunate bad encounters with cops, right? If you don't want to be grouped... Nobody wants to be grouped into a stereotype or really any kind of group like that. So if you don't want to be grouped, why would you group a cop? Why would you see a cop and say, oh, he must be racist, uh, whatever, you know, something like that, or not along those lines. Why would you group him into something, you know? Why, why would you do that if you don't want to be done to yourself? So bring this whole thing to a close, I know I took longer to get here, but to bring it to a close, God, dude, I'm still shaking, I scared the hell out of me. In closing, um, show the police respect, it is a good idea to know your rights, you don't need a law degree, I've just got um, a couple of semesters at a community college for a law enforcement degree, and um, that's enough that is plenty to give you a really good understanding on the way it works and how to successfully plead your case. Now, if you're guilty, you're guilty. You can't fight it in court and expect to get off. If, you're, if you've if done a crime, then there's a debt to be paid. And that's your part of the social contract. If you have violated the uh, agreement among society, right, then you've got a debt that you have to pay. And it sucks, but own it. It's not the cop's fault. It's not the judge's fault. It's no one but your own fault. And it hurts the gear, I'm sure. But all that to say, go easy on them. They don't always get to come home. They've got to put up with a lot of bad crap. They're good people. They want to help. There we go. Thanks for watching. Cowie Kevin.